So today we want to talk about what do electrical engineers that actually design buildings do? Like, what is that? When you think of electrical engineering, you might think electronics, you might think power grid, you might think uh, communications, like wireless stuff. Um, a lot of it's in like uh, printed circuit board design, which has to do with like creating um, all the electronics like TVs or your phone or um, really a lot of stuff that goes into to a lot of other pieces. Um, some electrical engineers you might think like automotive and Tesla and designing cars or the electronics that go in that. Um, but then there's this specific uh, subset of electrical engineering called power engineering and that even breaks down further. So within power engineering you've got uh, the guys that and girls that work on uh, utility lines, like substations, those pieces. So like all of our big electrical distribution systems like power generation. Um, and there's actually a lot of civil and mechanical engineers within power generation because of the turbines that are used to generate power, whether that's through steam, water, uh, coal, um, or any other method to really spin a turbine to then go to an alternator to then generate electricity. Um, and a lot of civil engineers that design um, some of the plants as well as the transmission towers uh, that transport the electricity. So there's utility um, people. And then within utility, you've got transmission, distribution, um, and then final power delivery. So there's even some tiers in there in the power plant side of things. So it can be broken down quite a bit. And then really it's so end user power is what kind of another subset of engineering is. And that's building design. So end users, and you can talk about plants and the people that work in um, like manufacturing or in hospitals or anything like that. And the engineers that are within there to like design the new conveyor system or uh, what they need to do to maintain any of the parts and pieces within the plant or electrical maintenance or anything like that. So really kind of on the operation side of those facilities. When it comes to design of those facilities, there's a set of engineers and really there's a couple branches. Um, healthcare is one kind of specialty within building design and especially for electrical engineers, all the specific requirements that have to be met within hospitals in regards to like grounding. And then you get into special um, spaces like MRIs, operating rooms, um, linear, linear accelerators, some of the other cancer diagnostics, um, oncology wards. All those pieces within healthcare are really specialized as well. And then you have other building design elements such as, you know, like your higher education, your, which are dorms, uh, classroom buildings dining facilities, um, then there's like K-12, so schools, we're talking elementary, middle, high schools, which are typically pretty big buildings. Um, you know, like a smaller elementary school might be 40 to 50,000 square feet. Typically they're probably 80 to 100,000 square feet just for an elementary school. Middle schools, usually they're 100 to 150,000, maybe 200,000 for a larger elementary school. And then high schools, you're looking at typically like 200,000, uh, 300,000 square feet um, for a new high school. That's all the academics, the basketball courts, the band rooms, everything uh, else that's associated with a high school. And then you also include like the sports fields and those pieces. So now that we're in the buildings and you have some subsets of different types of buildings, now what do we talk about? So we talk about lighting design, um, how you actually lay out lights, uh, what's good practice in uh, lighting design, is a space overlit, is it underlit, what's the spacing, what's the economics of those light fixtures, how do those <clears throat> fixtures like actually lay out, um, you know, what goes in a grid, what goes in a drywall ceiling, all the different types of fixtures, what needs to be pendant mounted, uh, where should a downlight go, what goes in a bathroom, what goes in an office, what goes in a classroom, what goes in a hallway. Um, so there's all sorts of pieces with lighting, lighting design, and then you also look at lighting controls, which is becoming an even bigger conversation today. In lighting controls, you're looking for 
ways to operate those light fixtures. Typically, historically, and still in our homes, it's done by a light switch, right? You walk in the room, you turn on the light, or maybe you have enough windows, you don't need that light to come on, you don't worry about it. So then in, in commercial spaces, we have what are called occupancy sensors. So that's when you walk into a room, a light automatically comes off, you leave five to 30 minutes later, they shut off. Um, so those are occupancy sensors. It might be on the wall, it might be on the ceiling. Those are the different locations that occupancy sensors are typically located. Then you have something that's also called a vacancy sensor. A vacancy sensor means that you walk into a room, lights do not automatically come on. You have to manually turn them on, but when you leave, again, in that five to 30 minutes, they'll automatically turn off. So you don't necessarily, you might not need that light to come on, so it's in vacancy mode, and you, if you need it, you'll manually turn them on. Then with um, really the advent of LEDs, we're getting more and more uh, dimming capabilities, and really that's inherent to those fixtures. With fluorescence, um, those old bulbs that we had, we had problems with dimming to where, one, it was more expensive, so it was an adder, it was a cost to the project. Two, it really decreased the life of those fixtures, which we didn't want, which added maintenance and everything else uh, to the life of them. So with LEDs, it actually increases the lifespan of those fixtures, so dimming is a great, great feature. And typically we don't need to let that light as bright. So lighting, uh, power distribution, which is everything from the utility coming in uh, to the main switch gear, which there's a bunch of breakers or fuses, which is protecting the cables going to the next piece of gear or panel. Um, so we're talking about all the panels, how to size breakers, fuses, um, and then down to the receptacles and the HVAC equipment or any other loads that need to be connected within the building. So power distribution, lighting, lighting controls. Um, also, that. so those are the two main focuses of electrical engineers within a building. The others that we're talking about, so we now we're into a uh, low voltage realm and it can be split up between departments depending on how the firm uh, that you're in focuses on them or might be looking to join. So fire alarm, uh, fire alarm uh, has historically been in the electrical engineering department. Uh, some firms are taking that to a technology department because it is low voltage. Um, it still needs an engineer seal, which um, is another uh, topic for another time. But so fire alarm, which is all your pulse stations, your strobes, your horns, um, any smoke detectors that might be necessary within the building. Um, typically that's at elevator lobbies um, for smoke detectors in dormitories, um, at firewalls, and um, there might be some other select locations that you need smoke dampers, obviously in ductwork too, so that if any smoke comes into the building, that you can shut down the air uh, supply and return within the, the given building so that that air isn't distributed amongst um, the rest of the building. So taking it from one floor and pushing it to another floor or another area of the building. So it's fire alarm, and then horn strobes, pull stations, where enunciators go, all those pieces to, to meet code and, and standards. Um, then you get into, which is primarily technology design, but that's uh, data cabling, data racks, um, wireless access points, uh, your intercom system, um, potentially your nurse call system. So in hospitals, um, your nurse call stations. So to basically if something happens that the nurse can um, call in help or a patient falls that they can pull a pull cord and, and get assistance um, to help them back up. So those are kind of the primary functions of an electrical engineer within building design. Um, and again, I'll expand upon kind of each of these. We've uh, dialed somewhat into lighting. We'll dive more into power, power distribution, how to size circuit breakers, um, what you need on coordination, what that looks like. Um, We'll dive into fire alarm design and each of those pieces, and then I'll really leave uh, technology to those more suited for it. Um, but that is basics for electrical engineering.